Now that we know how to graph functions and some basic properties of functions, let's look at some other interesting properties they have. First off, let's consider what's called intervals of increase, decrease, or constant behavior. They're called the monotonicity of the function. And functions that are increasing, as you go left to right, we always work left to right, go upward as you go that way. So in this case, right, the, the directions they go upward is if we start right here, and as you go left to right, you see, hey, we're increasing, 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 and then we kind of like level off. And at this point, we no longer go upward. Likewise, intervals of decrease are where we go downward, all the way from infinity, all the way on down, all the way to this point right here. Our intervals of it's decreasing. The function is going down as we go left to right. The same thing is true here. We start here and we go downward and downward and downward and downward. That's also an interval of decrease. Um, functions that are constant just kind of flatline for a, a certain period of time. This function doesn't have any of those, but it does have increase and decrease. The interval of increase, we would say, uh, that that stands for increase, is from negative one up to one. The intervals of decrease is from negative infinity because it's on, it's on this all the way on towards negative infinity on up to negative one unioned with one up to positive infinity. And you'll notice that we are talking about portions of its domain, not, not the range, the, the domain. That's because the domain is the independent variable. It's kind of what's dictating the function's behavior in general. We always look at it as functions of, or as intervals of the domain. A function has a relative minimum if there is an interval with a value that is lower than all the other values of f of x in that interval. And it doesn't have to be over the entirety of the function. You can have what's called local minimum. I'm just gonna clean this up here. But if you look right here at this function here, if we look at this interval, that corresponds to this portion right here. And you see on this interval, we do in fact hit a lowest point. The lowest point's right there. And so we would say that this, this, um, this graph, this function, has a minimum, so you could say minimum, and you'd always say at x equal to negative one. You could, you could actually specify negative one, negative one, that being the coordinate. And then it, the, the minimum is located at x equal to negative one, and the minimum is, the minimum is uh, negative one. That's, that's the actual value of it. That's the y value. Now we don't really consider um, intervals that are uh, constantly, constantly increasing or decreasing. You, you can of course find like over, let's say this interval here, going from this, we have this interval right here. You can of course find a lowest point that's right there. The problem is, is that as you look over the entire interval of the function, you don't, it continually gets lower and lower. What you're looking for is really a place where it changes from being decreasing to increasing. That's what this point is right here. We're going from a decreasing period to an increasing period, and that creates a minimum. Okay, the other side of this is a maximum. Right, right, we look at this interval, we do indeed have a maximum point right there. Everything else is below that. And just like the, and just like the minimum it goes from uh, decreasing to increasing, a maximum will go from increasing to decreasing, and that's where the maximum is really gonna be located at. So the location of the maximum, it's located at x equal to one, and the actual value of the maximum, so I could say value at max equals one, just like the min or the, or the value at minimum equal negative one here. You can, of course, also say 
uh, one one that's the actual location of the minimum as a point okay now that I've cleared up the graph let's talk about symmetry there are lots of types of symmetries in graphs but there are two main ones we consider when looking at functions so right here this graph does have symmetry it's, it's a little bit of an odd type of symmetry it's actually rotational symmetry Namely, if I took, take this point here and I rotate it 180 degrees around, it'll end up going to this point here. And vice versa. If I take this point, rotate it 180 degrees around, it'll go to that point. Every point on this graph do, has this symmetry. It's rotational symmetry. This is called, this is called um, odd symmetry. Not odd as in like, that's weird. But um, odd is in the uh, parity, or not, not the parity. No, it is the parity. It's a uh, symmetry. Uh, even an odd is 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 it called the parity? And this is odd symmetry as opposed to even symmetry. Even symmetry is what looks like this. It's re uh, reflectional symmetry. Every point on this side goes to a point on that side and you can reflect it directly across the axis, the y-axis, and you'll get um, the same point. That's called even symmetry. Now you may be wondering, what about across the x-axis? So let's look at a function that has symmetry across the x-axis. It's something like this. This has symmetry across the x-axis. However, this is not a function. I can take a vertical line test and I cross that twice. Therefore, not a function. That's the reason why there is no symmetry of this form. It's either this rotational symmetry that's odd or the reflectional symmetry across the y-axis that is even. Now, why are they called odd and even? That has to do with polynomials. Um, if you graph the equation x squared and x cubed, x squared looks like this. It has even symmetry. x cubed looks like this. It has odd symmetry. x squared has an, odd, has an even power. x cubed has an odd power. And, and that's, that, that's the reason for it x to the fourth, x to the sixth, x to the eighth, and so on. These all have even symmetry. x cubed, x to the fifth, x to the seventh, x to the ninth, and so on. Even x has odd symmetry. We can actually test for symmetry not by just looking at the graph, but solving for it algebraically. What we did here for these guys is look at um, the, the geometric representation and see if it has symmetry that way. We can test it algebraically very simply. If it's even, then when you take f of negative x, you'll be able to simplify it, doing whatever you have to do. You'll eventually get it to be the exact same expression as the original function. If it's odd, if you take f of negative x, you'll simplify it down to negative f of x. So that's what we're looking for here. Let's try it out for this function here. Okay, all we have to do is plug in negative x. That's for both of them, you just plug in negative x. So f of negative x equals negative x cubed minus negative x. All I did was I just took this thing and plugged into both of the x slots. Now all I'm gonna do is simplify. Negative x cubed is negative x times negative x times negative x. Two cancel, and we have the negative of x cubed. And these cancel, give me plus x, and I can factor out a negative. Uh, negative x cubed divided by negative is just x cubed. Positive x divided by negative is negative x. And this, oops, use blue. Uh, 
that's the same thing, which means I can re replace the blue with f of x with, with, um, with the f of x symbol. So here we've proven that f of negative x equals negative f of x. Therefore, this function that we started with here has odd symmetry. Okay, let's look at another one. Let's do a g of x instead. All right, just plug in negative x and see what we get. We get negative x squared minus negative x. Negative x squared is negative x times negative x. Two cancel, and we get just x squared. These two become positive, and we get positive x. Now, this can in no way be turned into that. There's a single negative there, and th there's no way to do that. You, you can't take a negative out. If we did that, you'll see that we have negative, negative x squared minus x, and that still doesn't look like this. There's no way to make it. You, you can't do it. But this means it, it has neither even nor odd symmetry. So it's just not symmetric. That's the idea. Okay. Uh, H of x equals 2x squared plus x to the fourth plus 1. Let's plug in negative x. Get 2 times negative x squared plus negative x to the fourth plus 1. Simplifying this, negative x squared is just going to be x squared. Negative x to the fourth is going to be negative x times negative x times negative x times negative x. All the negatives cancel. And we have plus 1. But this is the exact thing we started with. Therefore, it is h of x. So h of negative x equals h of x. This has even symmetry. Okay, here we have a graph with a lot of the properties listed off the side. This is domain, range, intercepts, um, the monotonicity, increase, decrease, the constant. And then some extra questions um, like when is it greater than zero, less than zero, equal to zero? What are the extrema? That's the same thing as minimum and maximum. And then what kind of symmetry? We also have what is f of negative 2? So let's answer these questions and just all we're really doing here is analyzing this function. And answering these questions, that's how we do that. So first off, what's the domain? What are all the values of x that uh, can be used in this function? So you just drop all of these things straight down or straight up to the, to the x-axis. And you'll see that we have everything. There's not a single spot that's skipped. And so the domain is negative infinity to infinity. You can tell this because um, pretty much everything is covered here, but also the spots where there are open dot and closed dots, these line up with each other. An open dot goes to a closed dot, open dot goes to a closed dot. That means that everything is covered there and we don't have to worry about um, any kind of holes in, in our domain. Now the range, same idea. We can start kind of going down the bottom. All this is covered. All of this is covered up here, and it continues on up indefinitely. All of this stuff has already been covered, and of course, this is a single line which is covered. And so, what's the lowest point? Lowest point's right there, which is negative one. And that is actually included because it's a closed dot, so I should use a square bracket. And it goes on up indefinitely, so it goes to infinity. All right, that's the range. Let's look at the x-intercepts. That's where the function, I'll make sure I don't ruin my graph. Uh, that's where the function crosses the x-axis. There's only one point that it does so, and that's right here. That's at 1. So you could say 1. Um, I, I would probably, probably say best x equal to 1, something like that. That's very specific. This point here is an open dot, and so it is not included in that. Y-intercepts is where the function crosses the y-axis. It's right here. 
and that's going to be at y equal to negative 1. That's the only one there, and it is in fact crossing at that point because there's a closed dot on that spot. Okay, where is this function increasing? Let me get rid of the blue a little bit. It's increasing as we go left to right on this interval right here. This is all going upwards. So what's the interval? Well, you go back to the x-axis. We start at zero, and all of this, right, this goes on indefinitely upward. So we go from zero up to infinity. We always use parentheses um, for this. That's because we don't really include the endpoints. Um, you, I guess you could in some cases. Like, like we could include zero here, but there's not really any point to. Um, including zero or not including zero, it's still this interval that matters. Interval of decrease is where it goes down from left to right. That's the only one right here. It's the green. And so we go from, what's the x value? The x value is 3, negative 3, I should say. And it goes on up to zero. Again, not including the endpoints. And finally, constant behavior is the red here. This is all just flatlined. What are the x values? All the way on up to 3. So from negative infinity up to negative 3. OK. On what interval, or for what points, is f of x less or uh, greater than 0? Now pretty much f of x is always greater than 0, except for this tiny little spot right down here. Um, right here is from from zero, right? This is from the, the x-coordinate. That's what corresponds to this spot. On up to this point here. That's all less than zero. So we say uh, we say from zero up to one. That's the interval that, that the function is below the x-axis, meaning it is it is Oh, sorry, that, that's less than zero. <laughs> I've been saying less than zero the entire time. The question here says greater than zero, which is everything except zero to one. Everything except that is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. Nah, not from infinity. Negative infinity to zero, unioned with one to infinity. You see how this spot slips uh, right into that um, missing union there. And of course, when is f of x equal to zero? There's only one spot that is equal to zero, and that is right there at the x-intercept, which is at um, x equal to one. Okay, now that I've cleaned up the graph a little bit, let's go on to the next one. The extrema, are, are what are the maximum and minimum? This is kind of, kind of a weird question because in this case, we have a bunch of jumps. This right here, I don't think we would consider that a maximum, or a, sorry, a, a minimum, because of the fact that um, there's nothing on the left-hand side. It just jumps up. Just like this one right here, we, we really wouldn't consider that a maximum because it jumps. There, there's nothing on, on this side of the um, function. It, it goes straight down to here. So. I would say that there are no extrema. You could say th that um, that negative three here is a maximum and zero here is a minimum, but you're dealing with things that are that are slightly different um, in the long term. Like that. there's other parts of mathematics that kind of go into the idea of maximum minimum, and these don't really satisfy that. Uh, the specifically derivatives and and um, things with calculus. Um, so that's that's why I'm saying there's no extrema there is probably the best thing to say. Now symmetry we're just looking for is it odd or even? Does it have rotational symmetry, or does it have re uh, reflexive symmetry across the y-axis? And this has neither. It's very unsymmetric. There's no, there's nothing there. So none. Last question is f of negative two. Negative 2 is right here. Go up to the function, over the thing, and it looks like it's a, 